What's going on guys, today we're going to learn about a hidden tool here in Photoshop that we can use to make the edges of our selections look flawless. So let's get into it. What's happening guys, my name is Brendan from BeWheelCreative.com, home to editing tutorials, camera gear reviews, tricks and tips, all aimed to help you improve your photography and photo editing. Now if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more tutorials just like this one. And of course, if you want to see a little bit more of my work, make sure to find me on Instagram at BurnWills. So today we're going to be talking all about the Quick Selection tool, as there is a little bit of an issue when we use our Quick Selection tool that you may or may not have noticed yet. Just to show you the example here, I'm just going to quickly use my quick selection tool to select around the white border of my little box guy here. As you see, we have our marching ants, everything looks good to go, so I'm just going to add that onto a selection, press Command or Control I to invert that layer mask, so now we have everything transparent in the background. Everything is looking pretty good right now, but to really see what's going on, let's add a black layer and put it behind our box guy. So I'm just going to fill that layer with black and now we can see what's going on with our edges. So if I zoom in, you can see that there is a little bit of white left over and that's just called fringing. So that's not really what we're concerned about at this point. What we are concerned about is how the edges of our box are very jagged. So this is something that happens particularly when you're using your quick selection tool. When you're using the pen tool, this does not happen. Now the purpose of me telling you this is not to make you never use the quick selection tool again. It's just to make you aware of that this is likely happening in all of your selections while you're using the quick selection tool. But luckily there is a hidden feature here in Photoshop that we can use to completely smooth out these edges and make our selections with the quick selection tool look flawless. So I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to start all over again. So I'm going to right click on my layer mask, go delete layer mask, and I'm just going to turn off this bottom layer for now. So this layer I'm just going to quickly rename to select similar. I'm just going to be showing you a quick thing that we can do to get rid of some of that white that was left around on the border of our selection as we, as we saw here. So we're going to do the exact same thing again. We're going to grab our quick selection tool and we're going to just make a selection around our box here. And now instead of adding this straight to a layer mask, we're going to go up here to select and down here to similar. So nothing really happens, but all that this does is it tells Photoshop that we want to select a little bit more of what is already picked out. So Photoshop is going to go and find a little bit more of the white areas around our box here. Since we have done that, I'm going to add this to a layer mask and then press command or control I to invert that layer mask. And now as you see, we have a lot less white around our box. So just to compare here, this is before and this is after doing the select similar technique when we're using our quick selection tool. Now, if we're looking at the edges of our box here, it is still jagged. It's a little bit different than without the select similar feature, but as you see, it is still jagged and it's still something that we'd want to clean up. So that is what we're about to get into here. Now, before we hop into that secret trick that I was mentioning before, we have to quickly go through and make sure that we didn't make any of the areas inside of our box transparent. Because with select similar, even though we have our selection on the outside, it's going to sample all of those white colors. And if there's any white somewhere inside of our subject here, it's going to select that out as well. So if I go and zoom in here, you'll notice right on the button, there are these little black spots here and that's just because those are completely transparent. So to quickly fix that, I can just grab my brush tool and I can paint white over this with my layer mask selected or I can hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask and then it will show me exactly the areas that are transparent. So when I hold Alt or Option and I click on my layer mask, it is just showing me my layer mask completely. So anything that is white is 100% visible, anything that is black is 100% transparent. Anyways, like I said, we're just going to grab our brush tool and we're going to paint white over that. And now I'm going to hold Alt or Option to click on my layer mask and exit that view. And now that button is all filled in and good to go. So now we have made our selection. We have selected similar, so there's a little bit less fringing going on. Now we can hop into our Refine Edge tool. So to access our Refine Edge tool, it's something that you may have accidentally accessed before and you had no idea what it was. 
But what you have to do to access your Refine Edge tool is you double click on your layers layer mask. So I'm gonna double click on that layer mask and now we are in a different window here. You'll notice our layer panel disappears. So in our Refine Edge window, we have a few different options here and the first one that we're gonna come up across is our view. So the view that I like to keep is onion skin and basically what onion skin is, is it changes the transparency of the background that is outside of your selection. So if you notice, if I go to 0% transparency, now my image is back to normal with the white background. But as I begin to bring up my transparency, the white begins to fade into the black background that we have laying underneath. I often like to use the onion skin just so then if there is something outside of my selection that I have maybe missed, then I can just change the transparency and I will quickly notice that, oh, I need to go over here and re-add this in or something like that. In this case, we're all good to go and we can just keep our transparency at 100%, but it is something that you guys should be aware of. Now, going into the other views here, we can see our marching ants, so that's just the selection around. We can go to our overlay, so anything that is red is outside of our selection, anything that is colored in here that is our selection essentially. Then you can have it on black, on white, you can look at your layer mask directly or you can see all of your layers behind it. So like I said, I'm just gonna be going up here to onion skin and that is just what I'm gonna keep it at. In this case, we're not gonna be playing around with our radius at all. We're just gonna go straight down here to our global refinements. So I'm gonna just zoom in to my edge here just so that we can see the differences that are being made. And basically what all of these global refinements will do is they affect the edge of our selections. So if I bring up my smooth slider, it's going to smooth out any jagged edges. If I bring up my feather, it's going to soften the edges. When I bring up my contrast, it's obviously going to add contrast to the edge of our selection, but what I find it does is it helps to make a feather seem a little bit more harsh. And then with our shift edge, we can of course bring our selection edge in or out depending on our needs. Now the first thing that I like to do when I'm trying to smooth out those rough edges left over by a quick selection tool, I'll first bring up my smoothing just a little bit. Now we don't want to go too crazy because as you'll notice, things start to look a little weird and sometimes a little bit of extra white gets added in. So even though our edge up here looks really great, it's starting to get a little feathered on the corners and then there's a little bit more white starting to spill in around this edge. So that's not what we want to do. Well, we're going to bring it back down to zero and we're just going to do something a little bit more in between here. In this case, about 14 looks pretty good to me. So I'm just going to go around and make sure that there's nothing too crazy going on. The little bit of fringing that may be left over around your selection is not anything to worry about because we can touch that up later on. What we're just trying to accomplish here is to smooth out those jagged edges left over from our quick selection tool. So this is looking pretty okay to me. I might bring this up another couple points and then I'm going to go to my feather and I'm gonna bring my feather up just a little as well. So as you see now the edges of my box has become completely blurry. So maybe that's a little bit too much. I'm gonna bring it down like this and then now I'm gonna add in my contrast. So as I add in contrast, you notice how now the edge of my box becomes very sharp and it basically takes away that feather, but our smooth edge still remains. Now lastly, what we can do is when there is a little bit of fringing here left over, we can just grab our shift edge slider and we can just bump it down a few percents. And as you notice, that white starts to fade away a little bit around the edges. So I'm gonna just bring that down a little more then I'm gonna do a quick little look around of my entire subject, and now everything is looking pretty good to me there. Now, since we have just gone through all of these sliders, things are looking just a little bit lumpy, so I'm going to just go back to my smoothing slider and I'm gonna bump this up a few more points. That should just kinda of help us to get rid of that lumpiness just a little more. So that looks really good there. So now we have a clean selection and everything is looking A-OK. -okay. There's none of that weird jagged stuff going on anymore. And now once you've completed and you're satisfied with your edges of your selection, we're gonna go down to our output settings and we're gonna go down to our output too. And I like to go down here to new layer with layer mask. So I get a completely new layer, a fresh start when I go back to my layers panel. So once I click that, I'm going to click OK. And now as you notice, I have a new layer here. So I'm gonna call this one to refined edge. So if I turn on and off the previous layer, which is our select similar layer, you can see the difference here. So you can see how much white we have taken away just with our refine edge tool. And likewise, if I zoom in, you'll notice how much better our edges of our box is looking here. That's before, this is after you notice the absolutely massive difference that that makes. We didn't have to do anything that hard or manually intensive. We just had to adjust a couple sliders that are hidden in Photoshop.
Now, if you have a little bit of fringing left over around your box, which is just the little bits of white kind of sticking out along the edges, we can use a special trick with our clone stamp tool to get rid of that stuff. But because I've already talked about that in a different tutorial, I'm just gonna leave that tutorial down below for those of you who are interested in learning about that. So now we have gone through, we have used our quick selection tool, refined our harsh edges, and now we have a really nice selection that we are now ready to add into another photo or whatever you wanna do with your image. Now if you enjoyed this tutorial and it did help you, make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like this one. Of course, if you have any questions about this tutorial, let me know down in the comments below. And if you wanna see a little bit more of my work, make sure to find me on Instagram, at burnwells. With that, that is all I have for you guys for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the Refine Edge tool here in Photoshop. Again, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and I hope to catch you back here next time.